Are you intimidated of Linux? Have no fear, John is here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of the Linux operating system with everything that you need to know to make you feel more comfortable to perform basic tasks and navigate through the Linux operating system. If this is the first time that we're meeting, my name is John Good. I'm a technology professional, a trainer, YouTuber, all of the above. There's no question that Linux can be intimidating. After all, many people spend a lot of their lives in the Windows operating systems at work and at home, and so Linux seems very foreign to them. I want you to sit back, relax, and get ready to learn. If you like this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to show your support for the channel, and also check the description down below for links to full courses that I've created on other technology subjects. I also make sure to respond back to comments. So if you have any questions or you want to see certain types of videos in the future, let me know down in the comment section. All right, let's get into the video. Now with the command line in Linux, it is built for speed. That is one of the major factors and benefits of using Linux is that you can actually use the command line very quickly. You can also chain output. So for instance, if you run the ls command, which is the command to list files, then we can chain that with the grep command, which is a search type command for password. Let me show you that real quick here. So if I ls and I'm going to list files in the Etsy directory. So let's just do that first so you can see that. Okay, so this is all the files that are in the Etsy directory. Okay, so you can see that there's a whole bunch of files. Now we want to list the files in the Etsy directory, but we want to search for password. We want to search for password. But that's what the password file is called in the Etsy directory. So now when we search for it, and it is a lowercase. So now you'll see that we have it here. Now that's an important lesson because in Linux and Unix, case sensitivity is important. You have to type it out correctly because as we saw, password with a capital P is different then password with a lowercase p, and so on and so forth. So case sensitivity is extremely important, so make sure that you're aware of that. But using the command line, we can chain the commands, and we use the listing of the Etsy file, that first command, the output of that feeds into the input of the next command. Okay? We can also send the output of a command to a file. Let me show you that real quick. Okay, now I am going to list the Etsy files that we saw here. Okay, I'm going to take all of that information and to go back to the last command here in the command line, all you have to do is press the up arrow. But I'm going to send that information into a file. Okay, so we are going to call that We'll call it Etsy underscore files dot text. Okay, so it's going to take that first command and it's going to create the file and send all of the information into the file. So now when we want to read that file, we can use more and then we're going to type that file name and you can use auto completion is what I just did there. Where you type partial of the word you want to type or the command or file and then you hit tab and then enter. And as you can see here, all of that information went into this file. Now, I want to show you this as well. The single arrow here, that will, own, that will overwrite all the information in that file. So if that file already exists, it's going to overwrite that information. If you wanted to append it, all you have to do is put two arrows, okay, two arrows to the right, 
and that will pin the file. For instance, let me show you this. So I'm in a different directory here, and I'll show you that. So I'm in the directory that I am in right now is the home slash John. So I am going to list the files here, and I am going to actually put that into the files.txt. Okay. Now, before I do that, let's remember here, this is what's in files.txt right now, all those Etsy files. So I'm going to list out everything in this current directory, which is this information here. And I am going to send that to the Etsy files.txt file. Okay. Now we're going to read that file. As you can see, it's different. That single arrow, it overwrites everything that's in there. Now, if I wanted to append all that information, let's go back to that same command, but we're going to list all the files in the Etsy directory, and we are going to append to that file, okay? So we do that, and then we go back and we read that file again. Now you have all those other files in there, okay? The beginning here, up there, all of this, whoops, all of this stuff is from that directory that we're in now, and then it appended at the bottom all this other stuff. Now, there are ways to handle command line errors that you might receive. Maybe you wanna send them to a certain file. You can send the error messages to a file using this command here. For instance, if we were using the locate command, we can use the to and the arrow here to send that to a file. If we want to send the errors and the output to a file, we would use the arrow and the ampersand. Now, navigation and file management. PWD is an important command because that is going to show you exactly where you are in the file system. So it's going to show you the folder that you're in right now. CD changes directory to another location on the file system. LS lists the files and folders in the location that you're at or that you've specified. And then LN creates a shortcut or alias, just like you would on your Windows computer or any other computer. I'm going to show you a few of these on the command line here. So again, we've already used several of these, but PWD shows us exactly where we are in the structure. So if we were to change directories to the root, and then we did PWD, it will show us the slash because that's where we're at now. And then of course we've used LS already. And you can list the files. So question of the day, what is driving you to learn about Linux? Are you trying to do it for a certification? Are you trying to do it for general knowledge? Are you trying to do it for maybe a new job? Let me know down in the comments what your driver for learning Linux is. Remember to look in the description for links for full courses that I've created. Remember to leave a like and subscribe for future content so you don't miss out. And until next time, I'll see you later.